Welcome to Love in the Love Boat, where we break down episodes of one of the greatest romantic comedy drama television series of all time. I'm Ishvan, Chicagoland's beloved children's musician and TV fanatic. And I'm Michelle, pop culture enthusiast. So come aboard. We're expecting you to join us for another edition of Love in the Love Boat. Hola. Whoa, okay. Very exa- Did you just get back from Mazatlan? <laughs> Cabo San Lucas. Oh, nice. Did you get married? <laughs> no, I did not, oh, okay. unfortunately. <laughs> Jilted like Julie. <laughs> Quite possibly. <laughs> <laughs> All right, hi, you guys. We are back rapidly nearing the end of season one. Crazy. And today we have something unusual, right? What, that Michelle Lee is in this again? Well, I mean, <laughs> that's not unusual. No, it's not. Uh, it just means that it's going to be a good episode. It's um, true. And please tell people, any new listeners out there, the significance, the importance of one of the stars of today's episode, Michelle Lee, please. Well, if you're just new to the podcast, my name is Michelle. And when I asked my mom, assuming it was heavily influenced by the Beatles song, it was partially influenced by the Beatles song, but mostly influenced by actress Michelle Lee. What was? You didn't say what. My what? name. She's drunk, you guys. She just got back from Mexico. Oh. All right. Well, the thing I was saying as far as it being unusual is today we don't have three storylines. We oh, have some yes. sort of like jumbled up thing. And in the beginning of the show, it says suggested by Geraldine Saunders. And then it says in quotations, the love boats in plural written by a familiar name, Michael Norrell. So I guess this is some sort of epic uh, storyline episode. It's called Musical Cabins. I see, I didn't even see that. I didn't see. I any saw of it on the Internet Movie Database. Okay, I am just strictly going by the the show itself. So today, it's just all of this kind of crammed into one. But it's it's good. I like this episode. Yeah, well, because it's basically about. Well, sh- let me. Should I go through the list of actors in this uh, episode? Yes, please. <laughs> uh, first up, we have Marsha Wallace. Yeah, Mrs. Krabappel, a.k.a. I don't remember her name from the, the New Heart Show. Oh, I don't either. I just know she was his secretary. Yes, and she just plays who? Uh, O'Rourke. Yeah, we don't have any other name other than O'Rourke. <laughs> She's a tabloid reporter for the, like a like an Inquirer-type magazine. Yep. And then we have, you know, as we mentioned before, the wonderful Michelle Lee making her, like, fourth appearance on the love boat in season one it's not enough in my opinion never enough she's amazing we have barbara rhodes she plays Dee, Dee donnelly we have dick gautier he plays kurt stanstell we have deborah forever and then we have i saved the best for last ladies and gentlemen we have the great paul williams oh my gosh if you know us at all you know we love paul williams he is playing someone called nelson hogue and Michelle, you may as well get it out of the way right now. Your obsession with people's age. He is 25 on this episode. <laughs> He's a 25-year-old who is, well, I won't give it away just yet, but I, I found that age. I don't know. Was he 25? Did you do if any research? If it bothers you, then I know it must be something. You know, I did not research it, but I generally finding, for the most part, they're close enough to their ages. But it, it seems like he maybe would have been at least in his 30s during the love vote. I don't know. I just love Paul Williams. You guys, if you don't know Paul Williams, is he wrote the Rainbow Connection, you know, for the Muppets. He wrote um, a wonderful, one of my favorite songs of the Monkees. The Monkees are one of my touchstones in life that I loved so much when I was a kid. Emmett Otter's Jug Band, Christmas. He, yeah, he is just like this truly unique guy. And, Again, oh, not to ahead. interrupt you. You did, though. But I'm going to. You know what movie I love that he's in. Oh, God almighty. <laughs> I try to like this movie. I it should so like this good. movie, and I don't know why I can't get through it. Go ahead, Michelle. Phantom of the Paradise. He plays Swan. <laughs> He's fantastic. Oh, my God. I love that movie. Check yeah. it out from the 70s, Brian De Palma. So Paul Williams is on here, and you cannot go wrong with Paul Williams in our in our opinion. And how do we start this, uh, this, this voyage? There are separate storylines, but they're all kind of intertwined by O'Rourke. Marsha Wallace is kind of like the connecting person in all the all the characters she plays a reporter for a magazine and she's she's trying to get the dirt yeah on on like the the sleazy things that on the high seas on these cruises but the first people that we do actually meet are dick gautier i thought his name was kurt stencil but maybe i'm wrong and he comes on with his fiance Dee Dee donnelly Mm -hmm. and he is just like a total male chauvinist pig correct 
Correct. In fact, they call him that at some point. Wait, this stuff is heavy. <laughs> the weaker sex. Well, how do you do? I'm Julie McCoy, the weak little cruise director. Hi, Sugar. I'm Kurt Stenzel, and this is Dee Dee Donnelly, my chick. Uh, chick. We're engaged. Having ourselves a little early honeymoon. All right, Sugar Face, huh? Eh? <laughs> oh, Kurt. <laughs> it's the finest animal I've ever owned. <laughs> I'm gonna break every bone in his body. Easy. I'm on duty. But I get it. They're trying to like make him off-putting right from the start. But outside of him being a chauvinist pig, he did have that amazing The amazing what? Head of hair. And necklace. Yeah, and a wide open shirt. He had all of the attributes a nineteen seventies man, attractive nineteen seventies man needed to have. And he had not them. a mustache. No, he did not have a mustache. <laughs> not everyone had a mustache. He had a very deep, dark, uh, rich cocoa butter tan. <laughs> Helmet hair. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, he is just like an absolute jerk, like right from the beginning. And he probably was 25, too. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then we do meet my main man, Paul Williams. He comes on as Nelson Hogue. And he's sort of like a little man child. And he's little. I mean, that's the thing. Paul Williams is a very little guy. He's a slight human being, diminutive, if you will. Correct. And so, much like myself. No, I think he'd be even littler, you possibly. Think? Well, maybe not, because you are shrinking rapidly. <laughs> I am short. <laughs> I can fit you in my pocket. <laughs> Rude. Hey, you're the <laughs> finest animal I've ever Oh, owned. my God. He's on the ship because he needs to get married by the end of the week or lose his inheritance from his grandfather. So what better place than to look for a wife quickly than a cruise ship? Excuse me. Excuse me. Are you associated with the cruise? No. Somebody stole my ice cream truck. Uh, <laughs> no, I'm only kidding. Oh, well, that wasn't funny. <laughs> it was funny. Yeah, I've had a brick of the ship's doctor. Nelson Hope. Hey. Are there going to be a lot of single girls on this cruise? Well, we get our share. Where do you keep them? Is there any special place they hang out? Not really, if you don't count my cabin. <laughs> See, there's one of your basic single girls right there. Thank you. Excuse me. <clears throat> Hello, my name is Nelson Ho. Would you please marry me? Michelle, since she is your namesake, and I think I've asked this before, what else was Michelle Lee kind of known for? Um, was she just like a character actress like this, or was she, was she in on movies. another show? I think she was in like movies in the sixties and stuff. Yeah, I see. I don't. I I just you knew her. I didn't know if she was on anything in particular. She was in a lot of movies, I believe, because I she had to be you know somewhat known for me to be named after her. Who was Michelle Lee? Well, she's Irina. Hi, welcome aboard. Hello. Hey. Oh, good heavens! Who died? Uh, these are for Irene Germain. Really? Well, that's who all these cablegrams are for. Oh, yeah? You know, one of them's from Burt Reynolds. He says he'll just kill himself if she doesn't come home soon. Hmm. Irene Germain, promenade deck 341, up the stairs. And... The crew is also obviously curious as to who Irene is because there is all this this attention. Flowers. Uh, yes, prior to her boarding. Um, but then we immediately find out her true backstory. Who is Irene Germain? Now remember to say goodbye to the kids, okay? Now well, look, Irene. Uh, uh, it's Irene. Oh, well, I'm your sister. It's Irene. Did you send the flowers? Yes, and, and the cablegrams. Do you know how much all this is costing you? Not including the crews and the clothes? I know. How can I have my fling? I want to be somebody for a change. You are somebody. You're a housewife from Pacoima. A widow housewife from Pacoima. Oh, Philip will be spinning in his grave. My Philip's been at best a twitch or two. <laughs> Look, he was a wonderful man and I loved him dearly, but that was a long time ago. Right now, I want to meet someone glamorous. And in order to meet someone glamorous, I gotta be someone glamorous. Sis. Look, uh, I gotta go. You just call me five times a day and uh, make up important names. Love you. Michelle, your other obsession is normally people's hair. Age oh, and hair. Is Marsha Wallace's hair, is that her natural hair, that super tight curl? Oh no, I was looking at it. It's really tight curls. Part of me would believe that it's perm. But she always had that hair. Yeah, that's like her like her signature look. But maybe it is her real hair. But it just seems super tight on that love boat. Do you want to tell anyone about the time you had a perm? 
<laughs> well, I did have a Who firm. did you look like? Another famous 1980s actor? <laughs> Who is that? Didn't you say you looked like Anthony Michael Hall at some point? Oh, yeah, but that wasn't with my perm. That's just how I was a, as a, just like a tween, teenager. <laughs> I kind of looked like an adolescent Anthony Michael Hall from <laughs> 16 Candles. <laughs> Oh, my God. Okay. <laughs> Maybe we can post a photo of that. I don't know if she'll allow that, you guys. <laughs> Me and Anthony Michael Hall side by side. <laughs> side by side, yeah. <laughs> well, you know, uh, after we've been introduced to everybody, we're jetted on off to the chauvinist cabin. And he really doesn't waste time in being more of a jerk. What's the matter? You, you mad at me or something? The finest animal I own. I could have died. Well, I meant that as a compliment. You are, you know, you are a fine animal. Do you think you own me like one of your horses? Hey, don't make any cracks about my horses. <laughs> Give the big guy a kiss. No! Come on, you don't care about me. To you, I'm just some chick. No, you're not some chick. You're my chick. How about I am a person? Okay, okay, you're a person. Now shut up before I felt you. Do you know what you are? A male chauvinist pig. Hey, hey, hey. You're damn right I am. You know what the big guy is? He is the Rock Island line. You want to ride it? You ride it like you find it. You don't like it? Adios, amigo. Oh, yeah? Well, adios, amigo, yourself. Get out of the cabin and leave me alone. (laughs) I paid for the cabin. You want to be left alone? There's the door, baby. (laughs) I can be alone. Do that real quick. And, uh, Angel... When you cool down, why don't you come back? I need a back rub, huh? Oh, and bring me some cigarettes. Well, thankfully, after he continues to be a jerk in the cabin, she did not get into her nightgown yet. She was able to she grab... She didn't jump into her pajamas. <laughs> no, she was able to grab her all, all her luggage and leave, and she goes to the lobby to see if she can rent her own cabin. And she can't find a place... Doesn't she run into Paul Williams first when he asks her to marry him? Yeah, he's running around the ship proposing to everybody. And that's the thing. Like, Paul Williams has no game. No. He's got no swag. He's got no nothing. So he is just, like, innocently walking up to women and proposing. Hello. Oh, I'm uh, I'm Nelson Hope. Would you marry me? Doesn't anyone want to play shuffleboard anymore? And yeah, so then she he he proposes to her and she starts sobbing because you know I don't know why that would make you cry because she was with her fiance on oh, the yeah. trip supposed to get married eventually that's why so then Doc with his radar hones in yeah he's got lady radar but I, okay so whatever he invites her to stay in his room what is it C seventeen or whatever yeah and I think it's C one seventeen didn't. In the past, wasn't his room connected to his office? And now this time it isn't? I thought, that's what I thought, because then he just has like a normal cabin like everybody else. Right. Yeah, that was, that's a good observation because I did think that, you know, like how the cat, like the captain has like that cool yeah, office. Like and office. Then... Right. And then Doc had like his doctor's office in the front and I thought his quarters were in the back. Maybe he's got like a stabbing cabin where he goes <laughs> Maybe when, so. when they're distraught women who are. But then Charo estranged. could have stayed there. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe he had another lady in the other room. Very good observation. Very true. I do not know. But we do get to see Doc's cabin, which is much like everybody else's. I always look on the walls to see what kind of artwork they have. Me too, and how they have them decorated. I like this cheapo stereo that he had. <laughs> And I couldn't really tell. I thought he had like a rugby like picture on the wall or something like that. <laughs> I didn't see what the other things. But I were. do too because because like, as we just said, he didn't. I didn't think that would be like how his room was or where it was. And then oh wait wait wait, you know what I did like though? What and what I I think I I maybe even had when I was a kid was the giant thing of cologne. <laughs> Oh, God. Did you see how big it was? Yes. Like, Doc like, needs a lot of cologne. He's <laughs> dazzling a lot of ladies on that ship. Yeah, so he thought for sure, like, this was this was a done deal. And, uh, you know, she, she was all ready for bed. That was really quick, though, right? She was, like, ready for bed real fast. Yeah, I mean, they didn't even really go for dinner or anything. No. And so, like, it's like, yeah, he's in his regular cabin with the giant, like, gallon of cologne. <laughs> and it this is not her intention at all. 
to talk to the person in charge of cabin. Well, that's me. Uh, oh. Is some problem? I have moved out of my boyfriend's cabin, and I would like a cabin of my own, please. Oh, ma'am. The ship is booked to the gunnels. There isn't a cabin I can give you. <laughs> oh, I can't go crawling back to him. That's exactly what he wants me to do. He even said to bring him cigarettes. Uh, gee, I'm sorry, ma'am. I just wish there was something I could do. Some teeny weeny little face someplace. I could sleep on a sofa. Please. Uh, let me see if I can find this. It's a tiny little spot. I don't take up very much room. I'm very no, quiet. No, no. I can't bear to see a beautiful woman cry. Mm. As it happens, I can help. You can? I'm Adam Bricker, and I have a very, very large cabin. I rattle around in there all by myself. <laughs> consider it yours oh really certainly after all as the ship's doctor it's my job to make people feel good <laughs> kevin c117 the door's open thank you very much c117 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 you think she's grateful now wait till later oh because now i'm seeing a foreshadowing that she is kind of an innocent how so? Because she was just being very earnest in that she didn't even, it didn't even dawn on her that that's what Doc was thinking. Oh, true. Michael Norrell, I salute you. M- meanwhile, O'Rourke is just kind of like everywhere there's some drama going on or, or it looks like people are hooking up. It's almost got that like three's company vibe where she's thinking things are happening that aren't happening. She was furling all over the place. <laughs> well, everybody's like shifting rooms. Yeah. Because then she's hiding in fake plants and stuff like that. Doc can't sleep in his room because the girl is there. And then he goes to Julie's room. That was a weird storyline where Julie was kind of like not one, like not understanding why nobody was hitting on her, like from the crew. Why? I don't know. Was it necessary? And then I didn't understand why they were trying to keep Paul Williams away from her either. Because every time he was like hitting on her, they he would give him like a signal to like leave her alone. A signal? A signal. You just talk like Yogi Bear, I think. <laughs> well, I think the reason that they did it is because he's looking for a wife. So, so like, if he's going after Julie, I mean, like, them keeping him away from her is simply because you can't lose Julie to this person. You True. know, so she's off limits as far as, well, they're also, they also have, like, you know, that sort of, like, big brotherly. brotherly. Right. So when she asks Doc if she's attractive or whatever, and he doesn't, he's like, he literally says, you're like my little sister. Don't worry, I won't invade the purity of your single bed. I'll sleep in the bathtub. Okay. Doc, could I ask you a question? I mean, just purely as a matter of interest. How will I sleep in the bathtub? Haven't figured that out yet. No. Um, well, here we are. Two passably attractive human beings of the opposite sex. Uh, one of us a known lecher. You a lecher? I never suspected it. I'm serious. Why haven't you made an overture? Julie? That'd be like making a pass at my own kid's sister. You know, you've done something that I didn't think was possible. You've shocked me. Good night. <laughs> suggesting anything I, I just thought that I don't get it prior to this Michelle of her feeling like is there something wrong with me which we I think happened before on a previous mm-hmm. cruise right she is like completely giving all the green lights to Nelson Hogue correct that this is gonna go down and I found that really weird, you know, because it's like, again, we've commented on the fact that her type is like an older man, and now she's with some diminutive man, and that is not on type for her. So Julie is a very complex person. She really is. But she is being denied left and right, and it's painful kind of to witness. It is. Meanwhile, again, O'Rourke is catching all this and writing notes and running into Gopher. She's a terrible reporter, really, when you think about it, because nothing that she's writing is actually correct. Hey, was it her magazine called Defile? That's what she wrote for. Uh, that's a weird name. It is. It's terribly <laughs> weird. It's really, I was like, wait, what? Like a Larry Flint publication, Definitely. like Defile. <laughs> it's disgusting. So weird. Yeah. Well, speaking of disgusting, you have the male chauvinist, and then he like, like they had an encounter though earlier in the show where like he punches Doc right in the face. Oh, you that's know? right. 
and because like he he's thinking he comes that to some, the cabin yeah and it's just like they let that go like he's not taken off the ship for punching the doctor right in the nose all right and giving him a bloody nose but he comes back in and then like for some reason thinking like things are okay between him and his fiance and he just uh-huh. starts molesting her yeah oh no that was very uncomfortable to watch but what a, she she fought him fought him basically valiantly she fought him and then you know what she called him no i don't remember Anyway, that's it. Look, I'm, I'm sorry I called your name. <laughs> Did you think of me as a person? Dee Dee, the big guy, definitely thinks of you as a person. <laughs> Do you love me? Hey, he's the Pope Catholic. <laughs> yeah. hey, you know, you know when, when, you, when you kicked out the dark, he really must have been sore, huh? <laughs> well, no, actually, he's very much a gentleman. Oh, know? sure, I bet. <laughs> hey, listen, how about going back to our cabin, really getting this honeymoon underway, huh? Oh, yeah, yeah. you know, it's just... <laughs> Not really honeymoon, is it? Yeah, well, why wait till the last minute? <laughs> you know, somebody may come in the door. You know, so go, what? So what? Yeah. So, what's the matter with you? What do you mean, so what? You're some kind of a... Of, of a what? A, just get out of here. Would you just get out of here and leave me alone? Go on! You won't get out. You've got to get out. You, porker. <laughs> Michelle, she called him a porker. <laughs> I didn't even understand that. Why? Well, maybe because he's a pig, you know. Oh, like, yeah, that's true. That so makes sense. Now that makes sense. Called him a porker. It was kind of funny. Was that when he had that amazing uh, safari suit on? I think so. With his giant snaggletooth horn. I would love this to find that a- outfit and put you in it. Oh, my God. <laughs> belt. No. That weird belt. Then that weird. A lot of safari. The men, A lot of the men wear those safari outfits on a cruise. I'm going to draw the line at this. I've liked a lot of the weird outfits on this on this I show. I want you to wear it. But I, I don't know that I could pull off the safari. You can. The, the weird safari predator outfit. I don't know. <laughs> you could probably blow dry your hair that way, too, if necessary. That I can do. <laughs> All right, now, Michelle, another thing about this episode that is super, super noteworthy, at least to me, I believe I know you well enough to think that you will agree with this. We have commented on how often the inability to make a phone call has played a major role on these episodes, <laughs> right? But on this episode, phone calls are flowing freely the entire time. Correct, because Michelle Lee is having her sister call and pretend to be different celebrities calling for her, which I will bring up the part where she was at the pool and it's it just... Isaac is like setting up the breakfast buffet, and there just so happens to there just so happens to be a phone there with a giant cord, like an (laughs) eight mile cord. Then he plugs it, and then he plugs it back in by the bar. How does that even stay on the line? The call. (laughs) I don't know. (laughs) It's so crazy. Like that is so such a weird thing to put in that storyline. Weird or awesome? Because you know who she's talking to, Liz Taylor. Hello? Yes, Miss Germain? Okay, just a minute, please. Thank you. Uh, Miss Germain, this telephone call for you. Huh. I'll plug you in. Thank you, Isaac. Hello, hello? Oh, how are you, Liz, darling? Oh, I'm wonderful. Good grief, Elizabeth Taylor. <laughs> how are Charlie and Phil? Oh, that's nice. Does Annie like a new horse? Charlie, Phil, Annie, Queen Elizabeth. Oh, well, it's just lovely of you to call. I, I'd i love to come to supper on Friday, but I'm at sea. It would be a little inconvenient. <laughs> and there's a delicious captain standing here devouring me with his eyes. So uh, I better ring off now before he runs away again. See you later, Liz. <laughs> Why don't you come sit here and talk to me, you gorgeous Captain You? Well, Captain, anyway. (laughs) No, gorgeous Captain. During all this, though, the Captain is becoming smitten with her. Oh, beyond smitten. I mean, he is just like, he is dazzled uh, by her. And for the very first time, right, Michelle? We think finally, what what have we been talking about? Captain needs some love. Yes, that finally the Captain is going to get lucky and all signs are a go. You know, you're a most gracious woman. Perhaps, um, perhaps I can return the favor. Huh? I thought that maybe I could persuade you to... Use my cabin. Oh. I wouldn't take any persuasion at all. Captain stepping to the bridge. Well, duty 
calls. May I see you tonight? Of course. But you'll have to charm me all over again. You won't have to charm me. I'll stay charmed all day long. So, like, you know, you think it's really actually going to go down. He invited her back to his cabin. Yes, but then, of course... The the intercom C blocks the captain and he's off to do some sort of walkie talkie duties. You're like, darn it. Yes. Guy but, can't catch a break. No, but no, no. It's not as if it's it's a disaster. Then they're in the lounge with wonderful romantic music playing. Michelle Lee's just getting sloshed like you. And no wonder you guys are so similar. Champagne freaks. You both <laughs> we love, love champagne. champagne, me and Michelle Lee. <laughs> and Captain Stooping. Correct. You have a lot in common. So they're then in the lounge, you know, because she said that you need to romance me again or whatever. And it's it's going great. It's going totally great. And they're like, we should take this back to the cabin. And they do. <laughs> From the first time I saw you on this ship, I felt that you were a woman who comes into a man's life but once. Hmm. How eloquently stated. Would you mind terribly if I kissed you? After such a glowing tribute, I'd be shattered if you didn't. Now we are in the captain's cabin, and they're they're you know hitting it off, getting all romantic. And he says something I've only ever heard a woman on a television show say. What does he say? Excuse me, lovely lady. I'd like to uh, slip into something more comfortable. <laughs> so he he goes to slip into something more comfortable, and she gets all panicky. Why though? What what? I think she just has a change of heart that she's deceiving him and maybe she's liking him or or maybe she sees that he's liking her more than she's like, she's just looking for a fling. I don't know, but I think she has a change of heart because he's really falling for her and she's deceiving him by who she is. Oh, maybe that's it. Because the captain was being really cool during all this. I thought he was... The, he, he always was, is. Well, he was, yeah, but we've never seen him in this kind of a situation, no. like an actual, honest to goodness, romantic he situation. He changed into his smoking jacket while she's on the telephone asking for a page for herself. So he overhears that and he's just kind of stunned, I think. I'll go as far as saying devastated. I don't understand. I can't go through with it. That's all there is to understand. You can't go through with what? This whole silly fraud. I'm not Irene Germain. I'm Irene. Irene Funston. A widowed housewife from Pacoima. I don't know what to say. You're still a lovely lady, filled with wit and great. Please, I don't want to start anything I can't finish. <laughs> this cruise was going to be the fantasy to last me for the rest of my life. A memory I could look back on in the years to come and... You, you are going to be a major part of my scrapbook. But what I realize now is what I need isn't a shipboard fling, but a man at home I can cook for and clean for and iron shirts for. I need what I used to have. I'm sorry. I can't be that man. Once again, Captain is denied love. Although it, it was it was hard to witness and I felt bad, it was handled pretty well. Because he's she, a mature gentleman. He is. He's a gentleman is is the name of the game. Mm -hmm. That's what it is. He really is a gentleman. And it's like he accepted that. And I think it's like ultimately like he knew that she really did like him. And then it was this really unusual circumstance. Mm -hmm. It wouldn't be honorable to take advantage of something like that. No. But then weirdly. I was just going to say that it gets weirder. The snaggletooth magnetism is very powerful on the ship. And what happens, Michelle? They're both crying Who's on the they? deck. Who's they? Michelle Lee and the Snaggletooth guy. Kurt, St I still say it's Stencil. I Kurt they... Stencil <laughs> and Irene are both weepy on the like deck of the ship. 
And so they bump into each other. Oh, and also, too, because she said that she just wants to go and be a housewife again. She doesn't want to be. Yeah, like you. That's always your dream of cooking, cleaning, and ironing. I love ironing. Right? Yes. You hate iron. I like ironing. (laughs) I do not like ironing. I do like ironing. At all. But it's, it's a funny scene because she's explaining that. You know, it takes a real man to be able to cry, and his reactions are very funny. That's true. What's his story? I I was hoping you'd have some background information on Not much on him. I I looked him up. He just... Because I recognize him, too. He's just been in every 70s and 80s TV show as, like, these kind of parts, you know? So he's just recognizable that way. And then later, I guess, he did a lot of cartoon voice work. Oh, wow. Which is interesting. They said Transformers and G.I. Joe. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. So he had a pretty lucrative career, it sounds like. I like that guy. Yeah. Because he he was a heel in the beginning. But, I mean, this part showed his comedic abilities because of the way that he's hamming it up. uh, Was Those are the things I find really funny. And, you know, Michelle Lee is honestly always good. She's, like, great in everything that she does. And it's it's fun to watch her. She really is. And she's so pretty and just, like, that one outfit she had, that, like, silver dress with the hat. That, what is it? Not even a hat. What is it? Like a turban. <laughs> like a turban, yeah. Nobody so. wears those. People need to start bringing that turban back. Absolutely. That'd be great. But it does make sense, though, and that's what's good about this show, because if she is admitting that she just wants a simple life, you know, of like... Taking of, care of somebody, yeah, and being he wants housewife. to be taken care of. Well, he's, yeah, he's a total, whatever, like, masculine guy. But then, you know, they're, they're showing a little emotion, and that maybe it really does work between these two, and they've found each other. While all this is happening, Paul Williams and Dee Dee are hooking up, because she sleeps in his room. Then he's sleeping on the deck. Then he goes and sleeps in Michelle Lee's room. And while all this is happening, O'Rourke is there taking notes, watching it all go down. But yeah, she's upset. And then he is just striking out all over the place. But then he's getting sloshed in the bar. And he's like the last person in the bar. And she comes down. And then he does a a sweet move of showing the picture of his pet rabbit to her. that's right. Bernie. I don't remember its name. (laughs) Maybe it was Bernie. And then they head back to his cabin. So, you know, this part's really cute, Michelle, because it's something that you don't really expect. And it is kind of sweet and just kind of fun because morning after, you know, he's just a sweet guy and he doesn't like pounce on top of her or anything like that. He brings her coffee and like the most delicious looking danishes. Did you notice that on the (laughs) tray? Oh, my God. They look delightful. Isaac probably set them up. Oh, my God. It was great. And so she's just like blown away by this minor act. He's being thoughtful to her. He's considering her. He's bringing her coffee in the morning. Right. And it's very sweet the way that he does it. And then what happens, Michelle? She asks him to marry her, him. Oh my gosh. (laughs) Dee Dee. It's morning. Brought you some breakfast. Oh, Nelson. How thoughtful. You don't mind serving a woman? No, of course not. Why should I? You'd do the same for me, wouldn't you? People should share. I hope I didn't get fresh with you last night. (laughs) You passed out showing me your rabbit album. (laughs) Real cute. Yeah, he is, isn't he? I mean you. Sugar? Yes, dear. (laughs) No, I need the sugar. Not as sweet as you are. Nelson. Will you marry me? Huh? I mean it. You are the most wonderful man I've ever met. You're kind and considerate. Please say you'll marry me. You'll marry me? I, I mean, of course I'll marry you. Of course oh, yes. I'll Before Friday, I'll inherit three million dollars. Could we have a reception in June? <laughs> it's very sweet because he isn't just like coercing someone into marrying. Like she genuinely likes him that much. And uh, and they really are suited for one another because they are both just kind of like I said, innocence in a yeah. way. Yeah, I thought it was a good hookup at the end. Like he he 
he found his his wife. And then she asks for a June wedding, and he tells her that he has to get married by the end of the week. That's nice sitcom writing. He's like, if we get married by Friday, I inherit $3 million. <laughs> and she's like, well, could we have the reception in June? Meaning, like, definitely we'll get married. And that was funny, too. Isn't that how it happened for us? Yeah, <laughs> it was. I had three million pennies, and, <laughs> and you could not resist that. But um, th- and that's it. That really is it. And they wrap this one up, uh, really kind of in a funny, cute way. I thought. Yeah. Oh, oh. I know you're gonna talk. <laughs> you're gonna talk about Gopher and O'Rourke. Yes. <laughs> we missed like the totally craziest, unexpected. So meanwhile, nobody's really hooking up during all this time, but she thinks that they are. Guys, I'm going to tell you something. Like, I love Marsha Wallace, and she's a great comedic actress, but there has never been a time in my life where I wanted to envision her having sexual intercourse. Yes. And least of all, with our favorite gopher. gopher. (laughs) What a weird hookup, because they are all celebrating Paul Williams' impending marriage in the cabin. And then Gopher, they're like, Gopher, go get some champagne. And then he runs into O'Rourke, and then they start talking, and then he invites her back to his cabin. But it's weird because the whole time, like... They're, like, fist bumping. Yeah, their relationship was more like bros with <laughs> yeah, one another. Yeah, he calls her, like, a gentleman or something. No, you're, like, a good guy. Or, yeah. Yeah, it's, like, just kind of strange. And then they go off and, like... Hook up. And, and that's the thing. You know for sure because they, they lay it out for you in no uncertain terms. You mean Julia Nelson didn't? And Julie and Doc didn't either? Well, if they didn't, and Irene and Nelson didn't, and Doc and Dee Dee didn't, then the only ones who did were... Oh, don't tell my editor. Hey, not this guy. I don't kiss and tell. Smith, you are terrific. O'Rourke, there's still one heck of a guy. So, uh, once again, Love Boat is happy endings for everyone. Paul Williams found a wife. Michelle Lee found somebody to take care of. And then the weird parallel that both Julie and the captain actually get denied love most of the time. That's true. That was another thing that I noticed. That, oh, like, yeah. Good point. You know, that's similar between the two of them. An interesting episode? Yeah, I think so. It was entertaining. I think, you know, the crew sums it up best when they use the Chinese food analogy. Well, I had an interesting voyage. Well, mine was unusual. Mine was certainly out of the ordinary. Mine was dull. I didn't meet a single lady. She was married. (laughs) Strange. But I have a vaguely unsatisfied feeling. Rather like having eaten a Chinese dinner an hour ago. I have a distinctly unsatisfied feeling. Rather like having been denied a Chinese dinner an hour ago. I have a totally frustrated feeling. Rather like not even knowing what a Chinese dinner is. (laughs) You're terrific. There you have it. Another episode. Well, I'll be looking on eBay for a safari jumpsuit for you for the uh, future. And I'll be looking for a turban for you. Oh, fantastic. As long as it's silver and glittery. And I'm going to price what it costs to get a very tight perm. And that's <laughs> also what you're going to get. Perm. <laughs> I'm going to ask for the Marsha Wallace and hope that the no, person knows who that is. It did not look like that when I had that, so... All right, you guys, thanks so much for joining us on this episode. Again, we're getting close to the end of season one. And super looking forward to season two. And we wanted to find a way for us to keep the show going. And I think we have a solution to it. And it can be kind of a fun solution because (laughs) Michelle has many touchstones and things that she loves dearly. And one of those that we have mentioned several times is the Jerry Lewis telethon. So I thought it would be kind of fun if we did kind of the same thing. So I think, we don't know exactly what day, but very, very soon, I think we are going to post our own GoFundMe, and we're going to try to hit uh, a certain mark, like you do. And I think that's the way that we can make this show uh, thrive and continue into season two, which, again, we have looked forward towards, and it stands to be even greater than season one, correct? I think so. Yeah, and the main thing, too, is uh, to allow um, me in particular the time and the abilities to get more guests on the show. That's the thing that we keep promising, and uh, it really is time-consuming to make this, and uh, I'm in no way complaining because I love it so much, but it will really, really help. So you guys, we're going to post it um, in the show description as well as our Instagram, and we hope that you guys will tip the crew, either big or small, and keep us 
afloat. I think that's a wonderful way to wrap things up. Yeah. So I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Stay tuned. And uh, until next time, I am Mishvan. I'm Michelle. Captain Stubing, Captain Stubing, please come to the bridge. And we are Loving, loving the, the Love, love Boat. boat.